Straw manning, the art of deciding a person or group's position on an argument and then defeating that argument to appear as if you've won the debate. Creationists do this all the time. As a young creationist, I was told that evolutionists believe that traits just occurred spontaneously out of random when the need arose for it. This is actually a theory thought out by scientist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck during the time period when spontaneous generation was still thought of as a possible explanation. For those of you unfamiliar with the idea of spontaneous generation, it was a long-standing belief that life came from the decay of other life. Decaying hay made mice, decaying meat made maggots, and so on. I was never taught how natural selection works, and so I was convinced that Darwinian evolutionists actually just believe Lamarckian evolution. They claim that evolutionists claimed we came from nothing and everything was random chance. Evolution by natural selection is anything but random, and we are beginning to discover that abiogenesis is no less random, as chemical properties of substances, when given enough chances to react, seem very likely to naturally move toward becoming more complex chemicals. Each stage of abiogenesis may be no less likely than two exact snowflakes existing. The properties of water produce so much variation when freezing that crystalline structures of the snowflake has many ways in which it could crystallize. They claim that evolution involved the Big Bang, abiogenesis, and natural selection, which really have nothing to do with each other and aren't even in the same fields. I grew up thinking that biological scientists were pretty much stupid and that God's creation story made so much more sense. And when given those two bad ideas, who wouldn't go with the divine being over the one that made no sense? I saw no reason to study it for myself. My pastors and other Christian speakers wouldn't lie to me about science, would they? Then I grew up and began studying evolution and other evil theories and realized that I had been sorely misinformed. The theory of evolution that I had been taught paled sorely in comparison with Darwin's actual amazing genius and beautiful theory. I had been lied to my entire life about this amazing phenomena, and I was angry. Persons like Ray Comfort, Kent Hovid, Venom Fang X, and Gear Up still argue against evolution, using these horribly undereducated arguments against ideas that scientists discarded at least a century ago. However, if you read the Bible, straw manning is actually a long-standing biblical tradition when arguing against someone who disagrees with you. Of course, in those days, the people who they disagreed with were not scientists, but polytheists. If you've watched my video, monotheists are confused Hindus. An idol is actually explained as a device for a spirit of a deity to enter and dwell with for a time with humans. During the early part of the Bible, idol worship was very common in Israel, but considered horrible by Yahwists and forbidden by the Holy Scriptures. Everyone in those days knew what idols were and what they were used for. They were spiritual tools to better commune with a deity and worship and give libations and offerings to. Then King Josiah came through and did the equivalent of ethnic and religious cleansing, similar to that of Hitler and Stalin. 2 Kings 23 illustrates how Josiah completely decimated, destroyed, and defiled all persons and religious sites who disagreed with his religion. He's forcefully moved the nation from a polytheistic nation where people worshipped Yahweh's wife Asherah, his brother Baal, in the temple, to where they only worshipped Yahweh and anyone who disagreed would be slaughtered. The claim is made that they had to be eliminated because they killed children. However, there is little archaeological evidence that child sacrifice existed or was common in ancient Israel, at least at that time period, and using child sacrifice as an excuse to invade is a common one throughout history as Rome used this form of post-war propaganda when invading the city of Carthage, and Bush Sr. used the incubator baby scare where Iraqis were claimed to be dumping Kuwaiti babies on the floor and taking the incubators so they could be used in their own hospitals to drum up support for the first Gulf War, which turned out to be a complete fallacy. Interestingly, Yahweh had no problem telling his people to slaughter babies when invading the Promised Land. Josiah violently destroyed all other religions in Israel, and after generations, the people began forgetting what idol worship was even for. In Psalms 115 and 135, they began to strawman idol worshippers using the same repeating arguments against idol worship. Psalm 135, verse 15. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. 
They have mouths, but they can't speak. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. Neither is there any breath in their mouth. Those who make them will be like them. Yes, everyone who trusts in them. These poor arguments against idol worship are used in both Isaiah, Daniel, and Hosea during the period when writers were probably somewhat more isolated from other religions. After the Greek and Roman invasions, these strawman ideas about idols went away as they were forced to interact with actual pagans and learn the truth about idols. Only a passage in Revelation 9 does the mention occur, and Revelation had weird ideas even for most Christians. This phenomena of isolation shows itself true in areas like homosexuality. As homophobia seems more prominent in small towns and rural areas, because they never have to interact with gays and less in cities where the chances of having to talk and work alongside someone who's gay becomes much higher. When a person is forced to work or interact with someone who thinks differently from them, they over time have the us versus them mindset removed and their misconceptions will be corrected. Sadly, scientists are even less prevalent than gays and most of them aren't trained to explain the science to a lay person. So straw manning is rampant in the Christian religion. When your beliefs have to be right and everyone else is wrong, straw manning is the perfect and many times only way to maintain your misinformed beliefs when new and better ideas come about. And it's a long-stranding tradition in the Bible to use against people who disagree with you.